Hey y'all, welcome to Big Texas Bossing, the show that spills the Texas tea on bossing up, tossing coins, and living your biggest and best life on your own terms. I'm your host, Lelani Wilson-Jones. It's time for Big Texas Bossing with Lelani Wilson-Jones. Spilling the tea on bossing up. And today on my business segment, we will talk about being a boss in the world of ownership and expansion You'll join the conversation with entrepreneur Chrissy B's novelty as a business owner and the road that led her into capitalizing in the investment of business operations through franchise ownership. Welcome, Chrissy B. Thank you. Chrissy is a native of Washington State, but also has resided in other states and overseas. While pursuing her higher education in Korea, Chrissy B. developed a relationship as a mentor and teacher for many soldiers, transitioning out of the military and back into civilian life. She worked for a program through the Department of Labor that taught transitioning soldiers resume writing, interview skills, and other skills to assist them in finding a career that matched their skill set. She has also been a licensed real estate broker for 20 years. Chrissy has been working in portfolio management and project management for 20 plus years and is also the co-owner of a national franchise that has been around since 1973, God's Father Pizza. As a boss, Chrissy B has also had her hand in the beauty industry and owner of another company named Cat D that offers an array of skincare products that make your face healthy and vibrant. When available, she offers mentoring and private client services for business owners looking to take their business to the next level. As a servant leader, Chrissy enjoys helping and serving others. Her restaurant feeds two of the local youth shelters at least once a month and sometimes more alongside with her husband. They also take to the streets of Houston and feed the homeless as well. Welcome Chrissy B. Thank you. Tell us, who is Chrissy B? Chrissy is an average young lady, pastor's kid, um, went through a divorce in uh, 2015 and really just kind of picked a place on the map, and that's how I landed here in Houston. Um, When I got here, worked in uh, portfolio management for quite some time, and met my husband that I'm married to now, not too long after, and COVID happened. And so we made some decisions as far as, hey, we're getting older, what can we do to really, as they say nowadays, secure the bag to make sure that we'll be okay later on down the line. So um, we decided to open up a franchise and that business has actually been in operations for a year and a half now, um, along with Cat D running on the side of it as well. Okay. And that business is the franchise? Yes, ma'am. The Godfather's Pizza. Okay. Okay. Now, I hear that Godfather's is hard to get into. Uh, what's the secret? How did you do it? Where did the tenacity come from? And tell us a little bit about your experience in becoming a Godfather's franchise owner. Absolutely. Um, And you're absolutely right. It is a little hard to get into as a franchise owner. Um, There were several steps that we had to go through as far as not only credit approval, but making sure that we had assets to back up um, what they were asking as far as uh, those numerical figures um, calculated to along with doing training. So we actually had to go to Omaha because Godfathers was first brought into um, their first uh, restaurant was in Omaha, Nebraska. That's where they're out of. So we had to actually go to Omaha for three weeks. Oh, wow. And actually, yeah, and work. We worked for three weeks. Um, And actually, I don't regret that because being a franchise owner, a lot of times people will open up a franchise and not actually work in the business. But having an opportunity to see how the daily operations work and just actually doing it gives us a different perspective when we're in our store working as well. 
And while we were there, we had an opportunity to be introduced to Willie Thiessen, who is the one who started Godfather's Pizza in 1973. Nice. He tried to open a franchise in May during the midst of COVID, May of 2020. Um, they told him not to, the corporate uh, corporate did, but he decided to do it anyways. He said, hey, I'll take the chance. So he took the chance and it didn't work as he expected. So it actually benefited us because he sold us his entire restaurant. So, and when I mean sold us his entire restaurant, all of his equipment, his point of sale system, um, everything that was in his restaurant, he sold to us at a very deep discount. Oh, that was wonderful. Now, where is your restaurant located exactly? It is in Spring, Texas. So it's 5275 Luetta Road in Spring, mm-hmm. 77379. And I'm connected to a Valero gas station, but we are a full service restaurant. Okay, nice. I'm familiar with Spring, and I know exactly where Luetta Road is, so that's wonderful. Now, because it's a gas station, do you get a lot of walking business, and do you have to market and advertise like you would if it was freestanding or in a shopping center, or, you know, does it do well because you are in a gas station? You know, honestly, we thought um, that we would do a lot better being connected to a gas station, but what we're realizing is being connected to the gas station, people are missing us. So mm-hmm. a lot of people will see the Valero uh, first and say, you know what? I didn't even see you until I almost passed you. So in a sense, it really, I'm having to ramp my marketing up a little more because people are, well, how long have you been here? Oh, I've been here for a year and a half. Well, I pass this street all the time. I never saw you. So, honestly, we thought being connected to a gas station would help, but in a sense, it really hasn't because people a lot of times will miss us or think that we're not a full-service restaurant. Okay, and I know that you said he left it and deeply discounted things for you. How did that work to your benefit, and what did you do to even come in and generate enough to cover your overhead? Right. So uh, being able to go through the SBA is what we were able to do as far as funding was concerned. So uh, for a startup business, so that was actually really helpful as far as being able to fund our startup, uh, being able to get those funds from the SBA. Um, And then, too, we had some other sources that sponsored us as far as helping as well. So that was definitely, um, you know, a great deal as well, too. Right, a plus. Now, your mm-hmm. o- your overseas experience, did that bring anything to the table for you in this endeavor? Or how was your overseas experience and how has that helped you evolve as a business person? Yes, absolutely. Um, living overseas really opened my mind to different, how things can be done differently in different places, but it all kind of comes full circle, right? So having that experience with soldiers and teaching them how to interview and, you know, what to say on an interview, what not to say, what to wear in the long run, it really helped me too when dealing with business as well. And some of the um, interactions that I've had, some of the relationships that I've built, Because even with the restaurant, I don't really just focus on people coming in and out of the restaurant. I've tried to develop grassroots in the community as far as building partnerships with the school district. And um, because we have Spring School District, we have Klein School District, you have Houston School District. So, you know, trying to build those relationships and partnering with some of the different school districts and Um, working with them and other aspects to help them, you know, so in turn, just really not focusing on the one person coming in and out, trying to reach a a further reach of individuals. Um, Because really, honestly, if we just waited for people to come in and out of the restaurant, that wouldn't give me what I needed as far as uh, revenue is concerned. 
So trying to develop other relationships, um, trying to get into the rodeo, um, possibly trying to get into NRG for football season, and just trying to extend that reach further. Right. Now, would you say you develop that uh, business acumen and developing your marketing portfolio from your overseas experience? Or is that something that's been in your traditional line of work? Or are you seeking outside help for those marketing pieces and to pick up business and just brand yourself? And are you branding yourself as a black owned restaurant? Oh, absolutely. The, the overseas experience helped quite a bit. Um, but two, branding as a, uh, so I'll give you an example as far as branding as a black owned restaurant. So the month of February, cause a lot of times corporate will post on our Facebook page as well. And I kind of monitor what's on there. They'll come through me first and say, Hey, do you mind if we post this? And a lot of times I'm okay with it for the month of February. I ask them, do not post anything on my Facebook, meaning the business Facebook for Godfather. I said, um, I'll handle that. So I really, for the month of February, tried to target Black History Month. So every few days, I would post a quote or um, a picture of an individual that made an impact in the Black community. Herman Cain was actually one of the people, because he is Black, um, and he started, he, he pulled Godfathers out of the rut they were in. They were getting ready to go bankrupt in the 90s. And he came along and he became CEO and he really pulled them out of that rut. And that's why they're still around. So I posted him and some other people on the Facebook page. So just really letting the community know that although we're a franchise, we are a black owned franchise. So, yes. Well, I think that's an excellent message and it definitely serves as a point of inspiration for other minorities that are interested in getting into franchise ownership. What was the biggest struggle in developing that business relationship so that you could secure it? Did you ever feel like you might have been discriminated against or questioned because you were black? I still feel like that. There are some (laughs) things that happen. (laughs) I would be honest with you. There there are some things... um, I'll say this, me and my husband, we were talking and anyone who wants to get into a franchise, I highly suggest that they do their research on that particular company and kind of how things move within that particular, whatever the franchise may be. Um, Because we are right now, there were two black franchise owners in the Godfather company. The one that have been around the longest, he just recently retired. So now we're the only, you know, active black franchisees in the company. And there's a lot of things that happen or, or happen that I see uh, that I'm like, well, was that done intentionally? Or, you know, why am I not seeing more brown faces? Um, right. And how many a- stores or how many franchises does Godfather have? It's 200 plus, and mm. they actually have a location in Russia as well. Oh, they wow. had opened that location. We opened in 2020. I want to say they opened that location in either 2018 or 2019. So they would be considered a worldwide uh, franchise. But yes, there, there are some things that I've seen that have made me question and made me send emails. And say, hey, what's what's going on here? Why why was this done? Or even just how I'm addressed sometime mm-hmm. in email. Um, instead of saying hello, it's just directly my name. I mean, you know, in business, mm-hmm. that's not how you write emails. Right. You, know, you, right. you, you address mm-hmm. the person first. Hello, how are you doing? Well, however you choose, you know, for that to go. So. Right. I I totally understand. I I get it. Has it been difficult working with the, uh, for lack of a better term, good old boy network in dealing through whatever struggles that you've gone through uh, to actually build a success story, you know, and to eventually have a legacy with regards to that? 
I have pretty tough skin. Okay. Um, I, I have pretty tough skin. Um, I, I went up against a pretty big corporation and, and won a discrimination lawsuit, um, Port of Seattle, as a matter of fact. Um, so I got, I, I learned then I got to be tough and not, and I, I don't like having just a hard exterior because everybody's not the same. Right. Right. But also recognizing when something's not right and speaking up for yourself. Absolutely. You have to stand up for yourself. Now, how was that working with the new husband working together? <laughs> we have our challenges. <laughs> <Everybody does. laughs> right. But you know what? I, I enjoy working with him daily. I really do. Okay. I enjoy working with him. So, sometimes when he when he's working my nerve, I'll go in my office and close the door. I'm like, you know what? You deal with it. Because he does more of the daily operations in the restaurant. Okay. I'm more on the administrative side. You know, I'm replying to emails. I'm going to meetings, things like that. So I'll just say, hey, I got work to do. You deal with it. And by the time he comes back in the office to say something, we've forgotten about it. <laughs> That's nice. That's really wonderful. And you're not only in your franchise business, you're working... A couple of other things. Are you still doing real estate actively? And how's that working? Mm -hmm. So my license does hang in the state of Washington. Um, I'm licensed out of the state of Washington. Uh, so it does still actively hang in the state of Washington. I have a few family members and friends that will use me. And then I also have a young lady that her and I work together. And she works for Berkshire Hathaway. And I'll refer them to her. And she'll, you know, do the leg work and we kind of work in sync. And once she closes the deal, we'll kind of, you know, determine how we split the commissions as far as that's concerned. So, yes, it's um, it can be tedious, but it's something that definitely can be done. I also did it, too, while I was living overseas. I had my mm. license hanging actively while I was living in Korea and kind of use, you know, a middle person to do my leg work for me. Well, I understand. Uh, me, myself, being a serial entrepreneur, I often find myself carrying the weight of the workload, uh, even if it's unintentional, because you you know, you know think you have people in place and this or that is gonna get done. But in reality, you have to step up and make it happen, or sometimes it just doesn't happen. Do you feel a lot of pressure uh, to make it happen on, on your projects and how do you divide your time? Absolutely. The pressure is real. I mean, there's been many sleepless nights. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear somebody else say it. <laughs> it's 365 days in a year and we probably spend yeah. a good yeah, 200 sleepless. So... I, I definitely mm -hmm. understand. Literally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, it's yeah. real and people yeah. don't understand yeah. my, the my pressure of it. Is, they they have no clue. They they absolutely have no clue. Um, and it's funny because he can tell when I'm stressed. He's like, what is going on with you? Or he'll say, you tossed and turned all night. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I had so much. So. I'm, I'm learning to try to shut my brain off because what is it going to do if I worry myself to death and then I end up sick or, you know, something like that. So I really, uh, I'm really actively trying to say, you know what, for the night, you know, whatever time that may be that I designate to stop working and turn the laptop off and, you know, spend some time with him and just kind of decompress. Right. I'm really learning to try to do that. Um, just an example, a quick example, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, you know, I'm from Seattle. My aunt had passed away. So my mother said, she said, well, we're going to hold the funeral until you guys get here. We'll just do it Thanksgiving weekend. And I was really torn with leaving the restaurant for a couple of days. But I said, you know what? What what sense does it make to be in business for myself if I can't break away 
and at least be able to go attend my funeral and spend time with my family for the holidays. Okay. So, um, and it actually worked out good. They, my employees actually did a wonderful job while I was gone. I cannot complain at all. They did excellent. That's wonderful. That is. Tell us a little bit about Cat D and the inspiration for the name. So Cat D is, so my legal name is Katrishka. And, but nobody can pronounce it. It's, I, I told my mom, how did you get the name Katrishka? Where did it come from? My <laughs> aunt actually found it. It's actually Russian. <laughs> and um, in Russia, it's pronounced Katushka. But so cat, you have a lot of people that can't pronounce it. So people will call me either Chrissy or cat. So cat. And then for my husband, Deshaun. So you have the cat and the D. So that's where mm-hmm. that name derived from. Okay. Nice. And tell us uh, what Cat D does. Cat D does several things. So Cat D has a skincare line, <laughs> a skincare line with um, regular products as far as high end beauty products and CBD products as well. No THC um, involved or no hemp, just strict, uh, strictly CBD in the skincare product, um, along with the private mentoring services. And also um, uh, trying to get into property management as far as building my own property management company. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. Let's talk about the beauty and skincare line. And uh, it's exclusive to CBD products or does it have other products in it as well that are non-CBD? It has other products in it as well. Not just CBD. There's other products too. Okay. What made you want to develop a skincare line? During COVID, um, the mask, oh my God, I was having horrible breakouts, horrible. And I just could not find anything that would work, you know, for my skin. And I've always struggled with oily skin. I get that from my father. Yeah. My, my mother, her skin is just perfect. She does, she does not have that issue, but my dad, the oily skin and the pores clogging up and, you know, all of that. So with the mask and everything, I just okay, could not nice. just get my skin regulated. I don't care how much water I use, what products I use. So I said, you know what? I'll come up with something that will actually, let's see. So I, try, I played around with a couple of things, um, did some research on the Internet and looked some other places and found exactly something that works perfectly and I I just I don't have the breakout and I still wear in our restaurant we still wear masks but um, I just I haven't experienced any of the issues that I was having before uh, we came up with the Cat D skincare line. Okay that's awesome so did you create the line wholly yourself or did you go to a laboratory? So, laboratory. Okay, so, that's wonderful. Yeah, so, pri- yes, private labeling. Yes, ma'am. Right, in the lab. That's wonderful. I do have some experience uh, in the beauty and skincare world, and I just love it. I'm dying to yes. eventually get back in it, but my schedule stays so full. But that is Well, a- your skin looks great. <laughs> Thank you, yes, my ma'am. esthetician. Yes. Shout out to Haley. <laughs> Yes. Lecture hey, hey. <laughs> yes, yes. She keeps me going and then I do use uh I do use some really good products on my skin that work because I have the oil issues. I really can't do the mask long term because it does create problems for me besides feeling like I'm suffocating. Mm-hmm. So yes, right. yes. So that is awesome. So what's next for Chrissy B? <sighs> Expanding CAD and expanding the um, the mentoring services. I still have um, some soldiers that are on my LinkedIn that will keep me up to date as to how they're doing and also ask questions. Well, hey, I was offered this job. What do you think about this? Or how should I negotiate this? And now I've had a couple of business owners reach out and say, hey, I want to take my business to the next level. Um, I want to pick your brain. And I was speaking with my mentor and she said, why are you letting somebody pick your brain without you charging some type of consult fee? 
Right. And I'm right. like, you. Do, she said, you have a lot to offer. You're a wealth of knowledge. So I know you like helping people, but, you know, yeah, so we had that conversation. Right. I, I would say that was a conversation that needed to be had so many times in our community and we are supposed to give back, don't get me wrong, but the experiences and the challenges that we've been through give us a plethora of knowledge that you aren't going to have. And you may not get it wherever you're going seeking it because other people wouldn't give it to you. You know what I mean? And so it's not necessarily free. And that's what we want. We always want to learn from one. Of, oh, well, I, if you teach me, I can't. You're not me. I can't teach you. And you may not choose the roads that I choose, you know, to go down, which is fine. But it's a mm-hmm. lot and people don't understand or appreciate it until they truly go through it. But you said one key word, and that was your mentor. I think having a mentor is important in whatever you're doing in life. So you can bounce back, you know, bounce back your ideas, bounce the struggles and somebody, you know, who helps navigate you through the challenges. So hats off to you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And I think a lot of times too, we don't want to want to invest in a mentor. You know, we'll say, Oh, well, you know, I can do it on my own. And my mentor, she's not cheap, but she's, she's a millionaire. So, uh, several times millionaire. So it, I had to sit down and say, you know what, I can budget this because this is all part of self development too. Right. As well. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So would you say self-development has kind of been the crest of what took you over to the next level and having to realize that you are worth what you're putting on paper that you're worth or more? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I understand that. And I hope the audience understands that because that is a big takeaway. We look at numbers mm-hmm. and think, oh, I'm this, you know, but you're always worth so much more because the knowledge and the experience that come with all that are things you can't learn in a university. They aren't taught in a training program. And it does take years to develop, you know, even the young mm-hmm. graduate coming out of Harvard uh, with the MBA, they are not going to be ready for the real world challenges. So all of that's important. I'm so glad that you brought that up on our platform today. What What is something you would like to leave business people with uh, as far as an inspiration for them to continue or for people who are just starting out maybe? You know, what is it that you would like them to know that had someone told you when you were coming through, you know, you, you would have taken that advice and ran with it? Yes. Um- I would tell business owners, don't give up. Trust me, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. As we said, you will have many sleepless nights. You'll have people quit on you. You'll have people walk out on you. You'll be short staffed if you're in the service industry. Honestly, whatever industry you're in right now, because right right now it's difficult to find people. Um, You may even run out of cash flow. Uh, But don't, don't quit. If, if it's something that you really are, you said, you know what, no matter what, this is going to work. This is what I want to do. This is my passion. Stick with it. It will work. You just got to stick with it. You may not see results right away, but just stick with it. Right. Stay the course, stay the course. Well, thank you, Chrissy B. Tell our guests how they can find you. You can find me, um, all of my social media platforms are the at sign, the franchise owner. Um, and I'm on Facebook under the franchise owner, uh, TikTok, as well as Instagram. And then for Cat D, the website is www.catkatd.store. Awesome. Thank you again for joining us. Big Texas Boston Podcast can be found on every major streaming site. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Big Texas Boston. Subscribe to Big Texas Boston Podcast. We're on your YouTube channels and subscribe to YouTube for alerts on more episodes. Until next time, 
keep bossing it up, tossing coins, and living your biggest and best life. Thank you. Uh -oh,